Hey guys, and it's Lars here. Welcome back to Let's Play Terraria. Um, as you can see, I've got my adamantine armor. If I open up my menu, you can see my full adamantite arm, or armor here, helmet, breastplate, and leggings. I've put my mithril armor up on this little statue up here. And once I get the final set of armor, my adamantite armor can live on this little bear statue here. Bear statue. It's not a statue of a bear. It's just not got anything on it. It, it is. It is bear. Um, I went. I created a new world to go grinding for materials, um, I called it Mapped Grinder, and um, the second I went on, the giant slime spawned and attacked me, so I had a second set of uh, ninja gear, ninja pants there, which I've uh, duly donned. I'm now using this legendary white sab lightsaber instead of the old sword I was using because it's just amazing, I managed to reforge it. And then you can see the hallowed area has actually managed to creep all the way up to my house here on this side. And the corruption isn't too far on that side, but I don't think it can travel any further. To start this video, um, I will be getting around to de defeating, I dare say, the destroyer. Thanks for everyone's hints. Um, I'll be taking out the twins after the destroyer. Personally, I think the destroyer is going to be a much easier boss. I'll be taking out the twins, the destroyer, then I'll be taking out the twins, and then with any luck I'll be taking out Skeletron Prime or whatever it's called, the second version of Skeleton, Skeletron, the bigger metal one. But first of all I'm heading down, 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 down here, because there's uh, something quite cool I want to show you. If I just uh, quit my voodoo guide into this slot up here, have him ready, I'm gonna actually resummon the Wall of Flesh. And last time I defeated him with the Mini Shark, I do believe. That's what I defeated. With the parallax in the background and this background kind of jumping about a little bit, it's a bit strange. I don't know whether it's the parallax and the shadows actually being strange. Take out this stupid bone serpent. Kind of chasing me all the way down here. It's just rude. Yeah, so last time I defeated the Wall of Flesh with the Mini Shark, so I defeated it with ranged. I've got the mini shark now, and I'm pretty much completely full of, uh, I think, crystal shot. Chris cursed bullets, even. That's cursed souls, or cursed whatever you get from, um, I forget what they're called, various items, various creatures. Anyway, it might be a good idea to go take out that rabbit if it spawns near me. If it does. There we go. Let's take out this rabbit thing. Anyway, so what we're going to do... Drop the guide voodoo doll into lava. So the wall of flesh has awoken. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to defeat the wall of flesh with melee today. Because since I've got this awesome armor on now, I actually take very few hits from the wall of flesh's various attacks. And what I can do is I can just stand just in front of this and actually hit the wall of flesh the various parts of it if it's in the right place with the backswing on this um, lightsaber, whatever it's called and it actually goes down incredibly quickly so right now I can't actually use it because it's not not cooperating with me very much and the things it spits out you can actually take out fairly quickly all you've got to do is watch out for getting a bit too close and getting gobbled up by it so how much health has it got right now? it's got... ok it's nearly dead, it's nearly dead already and there we go, it's been defeated. So, the wall of flesh on melee at this stage in the game is actually incredibly easy. And I'd also just like to come over here to the corruption area. I'll show you how close it's gotten now, actually. It is ridiculously close. It's right here. Now, this is a three block gap here between um, the corruption and the rest of everything. I don't think the corruption can actually cross that gap, so I, that side of my base might be safe. Uh, I'm going to summon the Eater of Worlds, ye old buddy, my buddy, 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 Eater of Worlds, and actually just show you how easy this boss is as well. I can just pretty much walk down its body. Some, usually it spawns underground, so this is rather strange. Um, I can just walk down it, taking out each part of its body in like pretty much one hit, which is incredible. I don't want to get too far out in case it decides to unspawn. But there we go, that's the Defeater of Worlds, or the, the, the Defeater of Worlds, I suppose I'm the Defeater of the Eater of Worlds, but that's the Eater of Worlds defeated. And now I'll just wait till night time and I'll show you the Destroyer of Worlds, which is an equally easy fight now that I've actually done some prep work. Um, if you want to take out the 
the Eater of Worlds easily. You, you ideally need to do a little bit of prep work beforehand. So I can just sell all this rubbish I got. I don't want the Ranger Emblem at all. These potions I can turn into bigger potions. Bigger and better potions. Um, I'm storing all my rotten chunks somewhere. Looks like I've used some of them to make that um, what you call it. And actually I don't want those potions at all, you know. I've got a stack of 30 potions right up there. So it might as well... Excuse me, I've got some burpiness in my stomach coming upwards. Don't excuse that. Um, just sell all this rubbish. So I've got quite a nice amount of coinage out of all that. I've got a platinum coin once again. Now, I'm not going to drop my coins in a crate. I'm not going to be safe like that. Because... Um, let me just put my gold watch on so I can see what time it is. I'll put it there. Once I start the battle, I'm going to switch it out for this Philosopher's Stone, which I've actually got from Mimics. I don't think I've actually shown Mimics yet, but they are little chests. They can appear as any chest in the game, and you walk up to them, and um, they'll attack you. Now, I usually get tricked when they're wooden chests, but on this uh, level, because I started it, started this level a long time ago, much like Minecraft, um, a lot of things didn't spawn, so gold chests and crystal chests and lock chests and stuff like that, weird little blue chests, don't appear naturally on this map, so if there's one of those I know it's a mimic straight away, but they do look like chests and then they'll jump out and like try and bite you. They do quite a lot of damage and they're quite difficult to kill, but I think about 7 or 8 hits with a decent sword doing around 60 damage, or 56 as this one is doing without the extra damage from this is more than enough to take it out in just like five, six, seven hits. So um, I'm going to wait till night time, following day, as it were, and I'll go ahead and summon the destroyer once again. I've got my mechanical worm right here. I've got a whole bunch of buffs. I've got regeneration potion, swiftness potion, iron skin potion, thorns potion, and a bowl of soup. Um, I guess I could quickly go over what you need to craft these items. Um, the regeneration potion is that they all need um, a glass bottle with water and this one needs an empty bowl which you craft out of clay. This needs I do believe I think it's mushrooms and day bloom. This needs I think blink root and something I can't remember what this needs to be honest. This needs uh, an iron ore and day bloom and this needs I think death bloom or death weed and cactus. I think the swiftest potion is cactus as well. And the bowl of soup, which is difficult to craft, actually needs, um, I think, one mushroom and a goldfish, which you'll find lying around in empty places all over the place. So that is a very tricky uh, potion to craft, mainly because it's so difficult to find goldfish around. But I managed to find five of them, as you can see there. Whilst I'm waiting, just another thing I can do is I've now got 10 feathers, 25 soul of flight and 30 soul of night which allows me to craft these demon wings. You can get I think angel wings or something if you get 30 soul of light but I want the demon wings for no particular reason. So there we go, there's my demon ring. Demon... Oh my demon rings! Uh, my demon wings. I'm not sure where I'm going to put these. I don't know whether I need to... Re what I'm going to replace with them. Because I've got rocket boots crossed with... Um, what are these? Rocket boots cross with the, the Hermes boots and I've got um, double jump and increases height jump so I might replace it with the lucky balloon I've got or the, the cloud in a balloon instead of the cloud in the bottle and the lucky balloon mixed together so I have actually got wings now and they will allow me to fly quite a distance upwards from the looks of it so I can go all that height and if I hold space I can actually slow down my fall so that kind of does without the need for the rocket boots um, I could just throw in some Hermes boots, but you know, I've got rocket boots and Hermes boots, so I might get rid of this at some point and kind of switch out what I'm using. Um, I don't need to double jump or increase my jump height. I suppose I could. Let's see how high I can go if I do do a double jump as well. I can actually go quite high, but I don't need my lucky my lucky um, lucky horseshoe now. So it's kind of like a, a difficult thing to try and decide what to actually select right now because obviously the Lucky Horseshoe 
is now an obsidian horseshoe, so that allows me to walk on fiery stuff, so that is still required. Um, my cloud and a balloon gives me the increased jump height and the double jump, so that is still useful. And these spectre boots have the boots of Hermes in them, although I don't need the rocket boots anymore, so... Um, it's, it, I, I don't know what I'm going to choose to equip. I might have a look in my tinkering table, see if I can tinker anything, you know, mix things together again. I doubt I can mix anything with these demon wings. But either way, I've got cool demon wings, which allow me to fly ridiculous heights upwards and allow me to slow my fall, which is very nice. So as you can see there, I can fall from this platform and not take any damage if I kind of like flap my wings as I get to the bottom there. I think as long as I like flap my wings at a reasonable height it'll reset my falling if that makes any sense I'll, I'll start my descent again so it counts from there. Anyway I'm, I'm running out of time here or I will be running out of time eventually so I'm gonna wait till night time 7.30 I'm gonna jump on top of my big platform which I'll briefly describe and I'll see you in a moment. Till then I'm trying to end a video right here, that's what I say when I end a video. Um, I'll see you in a moment. Well, it is 6.22 as you can see by my little clock, about a minute before 7.30, which is when the night time officially starts. You can see this box I've built floating in the middle of nowhere. This is going to be my platform of death as I fight the destroyer. Basically, what it's going to do is leap out of the ground. And once it's out of the ground, it can't really do much to you. It's kind of stuck where it goes. It's going to dig its way through these platforms. And as soon as it hits the top, where I'm going to be stood, it's going to go either left or right and just fall. I am, have built this thing actually quite close to my my home. That's because the corruption is so close on this side. I didn't want to fight in the corruption. And it probably will take out a lot of my NPCs, but meh, what are you going to do? So there might actually be something I'll do before... I start fighting it. Um, as soon as night time comes I'm going to go visit my gunsmith. So half seven is when the night begins and you'll, you'll see how it works. Um, all it will be able to do is shoot lasers at me and hopefully I should be able to defend those well enough. So wait for half seven, 728, 729, half seven it's night time officially. Now if we talk to our, sh our shopkeeper, our, uh, our good gunsmith, we can buy illegal gun parts from him. And I want to do that now, just in case he decides to get himself killed whilst we're fighting the destroyer. I don't know how many guys are going to get killed whilst we're fighting the destroyer. I'm still trying to double jump. Um, I don't know whether to keep the double jump or the horseshoe. Right. So what we do? Buff up. You can see all my buffs there. That's um, the soup, the thorns, the iron skin, the swiftness, and the regeneration, and my orb of light for no particular reason. So here we go. Mechanical worm. Show thyself. So all we've got to do is kind of dodge him as he flies up through here, which hopefully you should do. Come on. And because this sword is so fast and does deals quite a lot of damage, we should be able to do enough damage to him. So there's his lasers. Once these probes pop out, then we start destroying them. Like you get the black spaces on his on his side. And those things actually drop quite a bit of health, which is actually so handy for taking him out. Once we destroy enough of these probe things, he won't actually be able to shoot, shoot us with as, as, mu as many lasers as, it, as he is at the moment. But that's probably, probably the primary concern right now, is destroying those lasers and the probes that pop out of him. So if we do enough damage to the segments of his body, then he'll eventually pop out these little probes, which we can destroy fairly easily. Oops. And anyway, I, I can kind of drop down in between platforms to kind of tackle various parts of his body if they're not in very good places and things like that. So th those probes actually drop health as well, which as you can see I'm fully healed again now. So basically, just keep on top of him, keep attacking him with some sort of sword. It's a very good way to do this. As you can see, as soon as he pops up out of the top of here, there's very little he can do. You just, you, you just have to chase his body down the whole section of it and just deal him loads of damage. There's, there's nothing he can do about it. He can just climb up and down through here. So this just weakens him immeasurably. And we just wail on him as he, he kind of comes through here. And he can't do anything. So obviously as soon as he disappears and his tail's gone, you can take a moment to take out those probes and grab the health they've dropped. Okay, that's where my NPC's dead right there. He's a bit too far to the right. I 
think he slowed down then. Humphrey was slain. Who was Humphrey, I wonder? So, ideally, what I would say is you don't want to get on the inside of him like this because he can kind of trap you. If he comes back up, he can kind of tie you in knots. So if you want to stay on the outside of him so he's always curving away from you, would be my advice. And you can always drop down if you want to get a couple more hits on him like that. Okay, this is not a good place to be right here. Because he could so easily just... Um, drag everything all to one side. Okay, I saw his head pop up there at the bottom, but he didn't actually come all the way up. I wonder why that is. We can see it's about halfway through the night, just under halfway through the night, and we've got him down to just over half health. With the adamantite armor, he does... Okay, this is a very bad position to be in. Let's just stand here and wail on him. Okay, let's, let's not. Let's just go on the other side of him. With adamantite armor, he doesn't take many... He doesn't actually do a heck of a lot of hits to you at all. Got one hit on him there. And he got one hit on us as he shot the laser towards us. So it's actually... It actually becomes quite an easy fight once you've got it set up right. And it doesn't take too long. It's like build this thing fairly big fairly deep so he can actually get up to you. And as soon as he's at the top, all he can do is shoot lasers at you, and obviously that ability decreases as the battle goes on. So whilst you might be running out of health, he's running out of ways to attack you as well. I mean, you don't need to jump around much, you don't need an anti-gravity potion to take this guy out. Um, it is ridiculously easy once you, you've built a suitable arena to fight him in. He just cannot do anything to you, which is... I don't know, I, I like the way that happens. I mean, I spent the t I took the time to build this arena so that I could defeat him. So, for me, I don't think that's cheating or in any way, shape or form. It's just picking your fights. I mean, it would be like trying to defeat um, the Eater of Worlds outside the corruption area. I mean, you'd have to defeat him ridiculously quickly because he'd despawn because he wasn't near the corruption. So you choose. You choose where to fight your battles. You fight him in the corruption. Or you, you build a little like platform for you to fight on. You choose your battles and I think I don't think that's cheating in any way. I mean if you you have a choice because you're summoning them. It's not like they pop up wherever they pop up. Or whenever they pop up, whenever they feel like it. They will sometimes, obviously. That's my advice. Just updating yourself there. That little ping. Nothing to do with this boss battle. If you choose where to fight your boss, then as far as I'm concerned you might as well choose to fight him somewhere where you've got the advantage, or they've got the disadvantage in this case. Because our, my only advantage is that he's got a disadvantage. I mean, as soon as he's popped up like that, he's completely defenseless. I can just wail on the rest of his tail. Like the Eater of Worlds, this guy is about dead. Um, he won't, unlike the Eater of Worlds, he won't break up into chunks. And one piece of advice, if there's any piece of advice for you fighting that boss, is don't kill him unless you can see his head. If you can see his health getting low, let him live for a little bit until you can see his head, because his head is where the drops are. And that soul of might is um, a very important, and if you um, don't watch out for it, you can lose that. I left my clock on the entire time. I didn't equip this at all. Never mind. I've decided to go with the obsidian horseshoe, I think. Right, so as kind of like a yippee for winning that boss battle. I've got myself five shark fins. I've got 43 soul of mines because I did do a test run to make sure that I could defeat the the destroyer so I've got quite a few more than I actually would have had otherwise. Got my illegal gun parts. I can now upgrade my mini shark to the mega shark. The mini shark does six range damage and has a 33% chance not to consume ammo. This thing has a 25 range damage and a 50% chance not to, not to consume ammo. So that effectively doubles your ammo stores and it does a hell of a lot of damage and it's insanely fast. So I would give this a little whirl. Actually I will because you know what? I found a whole bunch of musket balls in here the other day. So I've got 250 musket balls to waste. So let's just run into the corruption very quickly. Shoot this rabbit and see it did a 35 um, hit on that rabbit right there. Let's find some enemies to shoot at, see how quickly we can take them down with this thing. So if this thing is doing around, I don't know, probably about 
20 to 25 on most enemies, and it's insanely fast. Let's see. It's it's got the speed, meaning that you can miss, and because it doesn't matter, because you're gonna, just going to be spraying and praying is your basic approach with this weapon, and the insane amount of damage just means that you're going to take them out. Look, come on, let's try and find. Um, an enemy from hard mode, so we can just show this off being ridiculously tough. And that's pretty much. Oh, there we go. Something I'm after. So that's doing about 20 damage. And it takes these guys out at a fairly good rate. And obviously, I'm going to reforge it to hell and um, make sure that I've got some of the best reforges I can get, like this legendary sword I've got. And with any luck, it will be ridiculously powerful and it will be ridiculously useful as we fight the twins in a coming up video. So thanks everyone for your advice, thanks for watching. Um, I've got... See, I've, I've been shooting loads and I've still got another 201 musket balls left to fire off. Um, don't know whether I should try and fire off some cursed bullets. Let's. I'm just going to quickly run back there. Okay, here we go. Got a slime coming. Let's try the cursed bullets. So there you go, that's doing like 30 damage to that thing. I've just crit critical hitting that thing for like 54, I think the most is it, it hit there. So this thing is going to be ridiculously useful for fighting things like that. As long as I can stay clear of enemies, this thing is going to be ridiculously useful. So here's till the next video. I'll be doing... I don't know what I'll be doing, I'll probably do some mucking around trying to figure out what I want to have in these slots here in my accessories and until then take care and I'll see you soon thanks for watching